<laughs> yeah, it really was. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. I want to thank you so much for joining us, listening to my weekly devotional today, anywhere you can find it, on social media, but specifically iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, YouTube, and of course, Facebook. It's an honor and a pleasure each and every week to give you my thoughts on a Bible teaching with the sole purpose of building you up in Christ. So, before I get started on my opening thoughts, let me say good morning and hello to my friend and my brother here. How are you, Donovan? Another week. Another, another week. week. <laughs> yeah, another, another week. You're still here. I'm still here. I'm yeah, still we, here. I always wonder why Donovan always says that. Well, we're, you know, he's very calm about it, but he's... Saying I'm still here. We're not. Right. We're not. With, we're not with God yet. Yeah, we right. are still here. We're one day closer. One day closer. How was your weekend? A hot weekend. It was uh, you know I was blessing my neighbor, helping him get everything situated there. So. Well, you should have came to our church because we had a big pool party. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wow. at, at the place we had. We had to the kids. Yeah. Kids. We had a great time. Pool party games. We had a That's lot awesome. of fun. But yes, you're right. It was hot. Yeah, <laughs> Very hot. Yeah. Let me get started on my opening thoughts. You know, last week we recognized the main things that we need to do in order to feel the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us. We said the first thing we need to do is surrender to that power. In other words, we need to choose to live in the Spirit of God and not by our sinful nature. After this, we said that we needed to pray to our Lord on how He wants to use us in order to do His work on this earth. And finally, God will give us the desires of our hearts, but we need to wait on His perfect timing. So today I want to ask one more question on this subject of feeling the power of God within us. Here's the question I want to ask. How do I use this power of the Holy Spirit in discipleship? Mm -hmm. Our goal is to live a holy life for Jesus. In other words, we all, all Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, we all want to be devoted disciples of our Lord and a reflection of Him to all people. So when you think about discipleship, you think about going out of your comfort zone in order to be a reflection of Jesus to an unbelieving world. Jesus, I mean, just hearing the word discipleship is scary to most Christians. You see, Christians are like any other humans. We all love positive recognition. Mm -hmm. We all love loving friendships. We all love sincere compliments, just like everybody else in this world. No one likes to be ridiculed, mocked, or isolated from somebody else. But unfortunately, this is the way many unbelievers view Christians. So how can the Holy Spirit help? What role do they pray, play in order to break those barriers in order for us to be effective disciples for Jesus? There are many ways that the Holy Spirit does that, but let me just summarize with three. The first way the Holy Spirit assists us in discipleship is that He's the one that teaches us about Jesus and the Word of God so we're able to teach others. Mm -hmm. When I teach a Bible study at church, or also when I preach the Word every Sunday morning, you will hear me pray frequently for the Holy Spirit to open up our minds and hearts to the Word of God before I begin my message or before I begin my teaching. Now, why do I do that? I do that because it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us the true meanings of the Bible. It's not about me. It's not about my wisdom. It's not about my guidance. It's about the Holy <laughs> Spirit that opens up our minds to, the, to the God's Word. I want you to take a look at John 14, 26. Mm -hmm. John 14, 26, Jesus was telling the disciples that he was going to leave this earth, but the Holy Spirit was going to be with them. Then Jesus says in verse 26, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Folks, it is the Holy Spirit that opens up our eyes to scriptures so you and I can witness to one another. When we surrender our Bible reading, our Bible teaching, and our Bible understanding to the Holy Spirit, then we can learn from the wisdom of God and utilize it in discipleship. I believe the reason we have so many inter interpretations and commentaries on the Bible is because we allow man to teach us through seminary or other means and not allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us. I've always wondered that. You know, we've got a lot of great men and women of God, but we have so many different 
interpretation, so many different ideas of uh, understanding God's word. Why is it? There's only one Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But the key is, is who are you surrendering to? Who are you listening to? Are you listening to man and man's interpretation? Or are we listening to the spirit of truth? John 16, 13, Jesus says this, When he, he being the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. Folks, the Holy Spirit opens up our hearts and minds to the truth so we can witness this same truth to others. That's why before you ever read God's word, it's important to pray within the power of God to apply, to allow you to learn from the Holy Spirit this wisdom and truth in reading the Bible. And trust me, when you pray that way, He will do it. You know, a lot of people when, I, when they come to my church, you know one of the first questions they ask me, Donovan? Where? Go ahead. Where are the donuts? <laughs> okay. Second. The second question they ask me, first one is, where's the donuts and coffee? Second question they ask me is, where did you go to school? Mm. Where did you right. get your, what seminary did you go to? Where did you get your education to become a pastor? And they go, they take a step back when I tell them that I have never been to seminary school. And I say, well, how did you learn the Bible? And I say, the Holy Spirit. And they look at me, give me these one of these looks, and then yeah. they walk away. Don't come back to the church, no. <laughs> type thing. Because people are so used to the the or the, uh, the, uh, the normal way mm -hmm. of pastors becoming pastors. But I never stepped foot in a seminary. I learned truly on my own, praying to the Holy Spirit. And that's how I got understanding and discernment mm -hmm. of what God's Word is all about. Does that mean that I know the Bible better than anybody else? Absolutely no. not. Mm -hmm. I'm learning every day. Every day I learn something new in God's Word. But what it does tell me is that the power of God within me has helped me understand concepts of what God wants me to learn in certain times. And that's all, all because of the Holy Spirit. The second way the Holy Spirit assists us in discipleship is that He strengthens us to be bold in our service to others. One of the main things that stop you and me from being a better witness to our friends and to our neighbors is fear. Mm. We are afraid of what people think. We are afraid that people are going to mock us. We are afraid that people won't be our friends anymore. We are afraid that we don't know what to say and we'll mess everything up. We don't witness or serve others because of fear of failure and persecution. Mm -hmm. But the key to living out our lives as true disciples of Jesus is knowing that you are never alone in this spiritual journey. With the Holy Spirit inside of us, we do have power and strength to be effective disciples for God. How do I know this? Let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8, starting in verse 14. It says this, Those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Mm -hmm. Those that are led, that's us, brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. When we surrender our days to God and cry out to him in prayer, we are no longer a slave of fear because we are led by the Spirit of God inside of us. Folks, you and I <clears throat> excuse me, are sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us power and strength to be the true reflection of Jesus. It is the Holy Spirit that strengthens us and gives us the right words to say or the motivation to serve others in discipleship. Folks, our strength comes from God, and we have all the power and motivation we need when we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. We need to use that to live God's will as disciples of Christ. Last way. The last way the Holy Spirit assists us in discipleship is through His spiritual gifts. Now, I talked about this you know, a few weeks back in detail about the spiritual gifts. But here's my question for you this morning. Are you praying to God that, that you allow the Holy Spirit to enlarge these gifts in your life so that you can give God more glory? In other words, are you asking the Holy Spirit to bring someone in your life that you could show compassion, mercy, or service to so they can see the Christ through you? Have you asked the Holy Spirit to bring a ministry into your heart so that you can lead in order to bring others closer to Christ? Folks, spiritual gifts from God are only good if we are motivated and eager to want to use them for God's glory. We have, we all have the Holy Spirit inside of us that have surrendered their lives to Christ as our Savior and Lord. 
So that means that we all have spiritual gifts to enhance God's kingdom. God tells us this in 1 Peter 4, starting in verse 10. 1 Peter 4, verse 10 says this, Each person should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Folks, the challenge for you and me is this. Are we doing that for God in discipling others? I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit plays a huge role for us in discipleship. He teaches us God's Word so that we are in, we're able to teach others in order for them to grow closer to God. He strengthens us in our walk by giving us the motivation and boldness to do the work of God in our sphere of influence. And the Holy Spirit equips us with His spiritual gifts to allow us to be that reflection of Jesus to everyone in, that we meet. Folks, we need to use the gift, use this gift of God. Use the Holy Spirit in discipleship. God has wonderful and amazing plans for you and for me, for His glory. But it's up to us to just do it. And guess what? That's what we're going to talk about next week. The old Nike slogan, we've got to just do it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have truly given us all the tools that we need to be effective disciples for you. We have power in the Holy Spirit when we surrender completely to you and your perfect timing. Lord, we have the power of the Holy Spirit to teach us your word. Strengthen us in our fears. Lord, it is you that provides us gifts of God that allows us to be effective in discipling others. But Lord, it is truly up to us. So Lord, I'm asking you to help each, <clears throat> excuse me, Lord, help me each person listening or watching this podcast, reminding them of the power of the Holy Spirit within them. Lord, we're asking you to motivate everyone listening or watching to want to be a witness to your word and to the people in their inner world. Lord, help us all to feel your power and your strength within us. Lord, we want to live each day for you, and we want to start today. Thank you for everything you have given us. We give you all the praise and glory in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I sure hope that you enjoyed my opening thoughts as we continue this emphasis on understanding the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives, especially when it comes to discipleship. You know, there's no question that the Holy Spirit will always lead us to a life of holiness. But we need to allow Him to do so by relinquishing control from ourselves and surrendering that control to God. Then we can be effective disciples for Him. Now next week, we go from learning, understanding, and discerning to what we need to do, like the old Nike shoe slogan, we have to go out and do it. We have to start applying these things, these principles that we've been talking about in our spiritual lives. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss that. Because now that we understand the role of the Spirit, and now that we understand what, what pivotal part He plays in our lives, what are we going to do about it? And what is the steps to go forward? So, please join us next week as we as we lean towards that direction and just doing it for God. Continue to read and enjoy my daily devotionals on my Reflections Ministries Facebook page. Uh, you know, it's funny, Donovan, this, you know, for about the month of June, we had one of the lowest amount of people um, uh, engaging and viewing, but the last week and a half, so the last month, of, week of June, and the first couple days of July, it has just popped back. Blossomed really has. We're averaging almost, oh, almost three, four thousand a day right. in, in viewing. We're averaging about four, three, four, five hundred in engagements, and we're sharing is just going over the top. So we've passed the thirty-seven hundred mark in regards to um, viewers. Uh, excuse me, in regards to followers, mm. and we're just blessed. So thank you again for enjoying. Thank you again for sharing. And again, this is a wonderful tool to witness to others without having to say a word and just sharing it to family, friends. You could be impacting people in areas you don't even know about mm -hmm. just by sharing devotionals, the memes, and these podcasts with people on your friends list. So please continue to do that. I hope you're enjoying, you enjoyed this monologue this morning as our goal has never changed. It's to build you up in Christ each and every day, not just on Sundays, and allow you to feel the power of God within you. That's what we want to do as we live each day for Him. 
Thank you, and God bless you. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of glad you, you brought up the uh, number uh, number dip because there's a lot of graduations during that time. So sure. a lot of pockets, even um, me and Demetria on oh, your other shows show, mm-hmm. had a dip because you know people are graduating. And there's nothing wrong with the dip and stuff. And people get ready to go on vacation and. Well, most of the time my dip is because they they ban me. Yeah, well, yeah, that too. <laughs> most yeah, of the that. times for that, but, but yeah, but la- last few weeks it wasn't banned. It was just not right. whatever. But yes, but the last I'd say the last probably a week and a half, it's um I've seen this sudden shift again, and right. it's been a blessing. And again, there's some people out there, Donovan. I mean, I know them by name now mm-hmm. that are so faithful in sharing and commenting and saying you know wonderful things about this podcast and about that um, um, Facebook page and I really appreciate that right, um, I really do uh, let me give you a, a quick scenario before we sure please do if the, the dip got to 10 people would you still be doing this podcast if I had Donovan <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you, you know what I mean if, if, oh if I don't care people. oh I because, don't care because I really think that not that God well God has every right to test us when he wants to test us but it's all about faithfulness. There's no question. There's no question. Because a lot of people have asked me this question, and I, mm-hmm. you'll appreciate this because mm-hmm. you do a lot of service work. Mm-hmm. They asked me, well, you got almost 4,000 followers. How come you're not making any money on the page? I get that question all the time. Well, how are you going to use it? Aren't you going to get advertising? Mm-hmm. People to advertise and make some money? And what they don't understand is that this page was never about money. About money. Right. When I ask people to be friends of the page, they suppose, well, I don't have any money to support. And I'm always writing back saying, I've never asked, I've been doing this thing for four years. Mm -hmm. I've never asked for one penny. That's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about witnessing. It's Matthew 28, 19 and 20, going out to the world and telling them about Jesus. There's nothing about money in this. The support I want is prayer support and sharing, sharing sharing all this. So yeah, it's like, you know, it doesn't matter if there was 10 people or 10,000. The the bottom line is if one person changes their lives to Christ. We're doing our job. And, and uh, we're doing what God wants us to do. I, I tell people I'm not putting my riches in heaven. So no, there's no, that's that exactly right. And, and I'll tell you this. You have no idea how much I, I look forward to this. Yeah, yeah. Number one, being with you is always yeah. entertainment. <laughs> yeah. That's a fact. But then number two, I love doing this show. And it's just like, you know, and then the comments and all that just makes it even better. Yeah. So it, it really is, it really yeah, is a blessing. You know, and, and, and real quick, it's kind of funny too because sometimes you'll be out and about. And like, I don't even know. And people say, aren't you that Donovan guy with Pastor Don? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, because, you know, I'm a political guy. So I, kind of, I kind of guarded a little bit. I was going to say, what are you doing with that guy? Right, but, um, you, know, you know, I don't want to get jumped on. But, uh, you know, you know, it lets you know that, you know, the, people are, it listening. Is, are listening and people are looking at the video, you know, and they'll recognize me and I'll be like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's also, they're looking at you in a slightly different light, right. too. Right. They know he's the political guy. Yeah. You know everything about the politics mm-hmm. in the city here of Marina Valley. But you also, there's a different side to you. Right, right. There's a side that loves the Lord. I don't know anybody who serves the Lord more than this man. He mm-hmm. does so much for so many people. You know, people don't see that side. They just see maybe yeah. this, the political <laughs> end. Yeah. They don't see the heart of this man that I was blessed to see. I've seen for many years now that I've known him. So, yeah, they don't know that. But I'll tell you this. Anybody who tries to badmouth you, I just don't I just don't see it. Right. Not, not even Thank a little you. bit. Thank so I really appreciate, appreciate everything you do. Yes, absolutely. You know what this week is, Donovan? Yes. yes. I, I love this time of the year. Uh, well, I'm not Blockbuster thrilled. Blockbuster movie time. Yeah, not thrilled about the weather type right. thing. But, um, we live oh, in the desert. I love this time of the year. I love the month of July, and I'll tell you why. A couple of reasons. Number one, it's my birthday month. Yes. So, of course, I'm going to love yes. that. It's my daughter's birthday month, oh, so right I celebrate on. that too. Usually, it's a good vacation month. Yes, yes. But also because of the 4th of July. Yeah. One of my favorite holidays... Of the year, and and it's not because I love fireworks. I mean, I get to the point. I've seen fireworks for forty years. Yeah, it, it gets to the point that you know it's not that big a deal anymore. But it's still something I look forward to. It's not the fireworks. It's not the barbecues. I can do barbecues on any Sunday afternoon. It's not that. It's getting together with family. I do that all the time. It's what Fourth of July stands for, and it really does. And you know, I want to do a little special time right now with Donovan. I want to talk a little bit about the 4th of July. I want to talk a little bit about the time back in 1776 that a lot of people may not know about. And then I am really interested in getting Donovan's insights as being a 24-year military man serving this country faithfully uh, in in so many different capacities. Uh, I'd love to get his input on what the 4th of July means to him personally and then how that relates to his Christian faith. But let me go again and get started. You know, the question that people I, I've asked, I've asked myself and people have asked me is, why do we celebrate the 4th? What's the reason for celebrate the 4th of July? Well, there is a reason why we celebrate the 4th, and we must remember 
It is our Declaration of Independence. It, it's exactly what the word means. It is the day that the colonies declared their independence from England. Freedom was declared in some famous words of the Declaration of Independence, and if you know those first words, it goes like this, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what independence is all about. And on July 4th, 1776, we declared that uh, day of independence for this nation. You know, it's interesting, and I think you'll get a kick out of this, Don. Mm -hmm. um, Declaration of Independence was first signed by John Hancock, and then by all the representatives from the different states at that time. You know, do you realize that we still honor John Hancock by saying, if you have to sign an important document, they'll say, put your John Hancock on that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always funny. It's like the guy's not known for signing the Declaration of Independence. He's known by the words, put your John Hancock on anything of importance. You know, but here's the question I've always asked. Do you have any idea who the second signer of the Declaration of Independence was? Wasn't it John Adams? It was not John Adams. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny. We all know John Hancock yeah. was the first. <laughs> so he gets, that, he gets that, mod that, 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 that monogram. No one knows who the second guy who was that signed it. His name was Josiah Bartlett. Josiah Bartlett was the second signer of the Declaration of Independence. No one says, put your Jos Josiah Bartlett on it, but they know John Hancock. But let's talk a little bit about the history of, Declaration of, of, of July 4th. July 4th, 1776 was an exciting day. It was a day of joy and celebration. But does anybody really know what happened after that? You're a history guy. Yeah. You love history. Do you know after they signed the Declaration of Independence, what happened between July 1776 and the end of that year? Do you have any? Did you watch any movies or read any books about that? Um, my understanding is after they signed the Declaration of Independence, is they went and got drunk and got in some bar brawls and fights and stuff like that, and you know, and then they basically at the end of 1776 they pretty much uh, war planned and. Got together. Okay, the drunk part I think was yeah. probably right around the right after the Declaration right. of Independence. But the key, the question that a lot of people don't really realize also is the fact that we almost lost our independence yeah. during that same year. Let me let me give you a little bit of history on this. What followed uh, uh, July Fourth, uh, uh, seventeen seventy six, was not simple. It was not joyful, and it definitely was not easy. Most people don't know that the aftermath from July Fourth to December seventeen seventy six was extremely important. Because history shows how the battle, how the brittle and fragile was the hope of independence for that first year. Mm -hmm. We don't realize how the troops were completely battered and right. feeling beaten after they signed that Declaration of Independence. Let me give you a little bit of facts. George Washington was commanding an army that was truly disintegrating right before mm -hmm. his eyes. It looked like all hope and victory was gone after this Declaration of Independence was signed. Washington made a huge military blunder that cost him the state of New York to the British Army. Mm -hmm. The Congress, in fear, fled from Philadelphia because they seen that it was a lost cause and they were losing that city as well to the Brits. The, con the Continental Army was low on gunpowder, guns, foods, and other supplies. The civilians that had celebrated so heartily, like Donovan mm -hmm. said, they went and partied, had a huge time. Those civilians, right after this, were now wondering if it would be wise just to give up at this point mm -hmm. and forfeit the land back to England. Most of the soldiers would finish their enlistments on December 31st, mm -hmm. and others didn't even wait that long and right. simply deserted because it was so dismal. This was after, right after... July 4th, 1776. George Washington's army was about to be destroyed by British troops and German mercenaries known as the Hesians. The future of America was hanging on by a thread. Folks, this is real. Real history, same year. It, which makes the events of Christmas Day, 1776, so amazing. George Washington led his troops across the Delaware River against incredible odds. 
on that day, remember this is Christmas Day, the day that Jesus, the day we celebrate the birth of Jesus, there was hail and sleet and ice flows. The operation took a lot, many hours longer than originally thought because of the weather. As a matter of fact, two of the generals that was accompanied George Washington failed to join in the fight because of the horrible weather conditions. But George Washington, faithful as he was, led his troops against all odds on a nine-mile march and literally defeated the better trained and equipped Asian army. And at that point, July, uh, December 25th, 1776, the war completely turned around. An almost impossible mission was completed, and an, an seemingly undefeatable enemy was also defeated. The future at the point hung by a thread, but the thread was all it took. This is our history as Americans, and we ought to cherish it, and we ought to be grateful to God for it. My point on this is understanding this is that there is no doubt that the only reason why we are free today from the Declaration of Independence is because of the hand of God. Mm -hmm. it ha it's just amazing how, how God's hand was there. This is God's country. I don't care what anybody else says. This is God's country. And I'm telling you, God had brought this country into existence for a reason, for the right purpose, and I know it's to spread the gospel message. And the fact that, it, it, that the whole war turned on Christmas Day tells me how much of the influence that God has on, on, on our country. I want to give you for Christian, think about it now from the Christian aspect. You know, it's our life is very similar to what was going on back a couple hundred years ago. Think about your life. Think about my life before we came to Christ. We were in a dismal and hopeless state in our sin, just like the just like our armies against the British. We had no freedom. There's no freedom in sin. We were losing the fight against the enemy, and of course the enemy being Satan. We needed a miracle, just like George Washington did uh, against the British. In the uh, in December of 1776, but that and that miracle for us was provided by Jesus, just like the miracle of His birth on December 25th. I want to give you a few verses. I just want you to really ponder on here that talks about the freedom that we have when it comes to our um, our our faith in Christ. I want to start with First Peter 2:16. 1 Peter 2:16 says this: Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as servants of God. What exactly does that mean? We are free. We are saved for eternity. Nothing can change that. Because when we're in the Father's hands, God has us. We are adopted sons and daughters of the King. But Donovan, we can't take that for granted. Mm. Just like the freedom we're going to talk about your, mm. from your standpoint. We can't take the, for granted the freedom we have in Christ and just live a life of sin. Mm. We can't do that. Just like we can't take for granted the freedoms we have in this country. Just because we can do whatever we want, we have to respect those, especially the military men and women that gave up so much. Freedom has a cost. There's a price tag to all freedom. And that's what Jesus is saying here in this, in this verse. He's saying, hey, guys, you're free, yes. But that means you live in gratitude for what God's given you. Do not live in your sin. Another verse I want to talk about, 2 Corinthians 3.17. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says this, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So true. When you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, there is freedom. No more bondage of sin. No more bondage of death. Mm -hmm. Not having to worry about where you're going to be once you die. There's freedom in that. No matter what you're going through in life, you may have a difficult illness. You may have tough financial uh, hardships. Mm -hmm. You might be going through stuff. It doesn't matter. Your freedom is there in Christ. And that's what God's saying in that. And then last verse I just want to mention real quickly. Oh, I got two more. Galatians 5.1. One of my favorite verses. Galatians 5.1 says, It is freedom... That Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Mm. What is the slavery? Sin. Sin bonds, bondages us. Sin puts the chains on us. That's what sin does. But Jesus sets us free. We are free from sin because of his sacrifice. Mm. And the last verse, probably the most famous verse of freedom, 
that every the, I know Donovan knows and most Christians know is John 8.32 and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is Christ. He will set you free. So what I want to do is I, I, I wrote down a couple questions for Donovan. I wrote down a couple questions for him. That's what 4th of July means to me as a non-military man who is just so grateful that I have freedom in this country because of brave men and women like this man that fought for our for our country and the many, many other men and women that did the same. But I'm also more, even more grateful for what Jesus did for me. The fact that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, for your sins, for all of our sins, and now we live in complete freedom and bondage free from sin and from death. So the question I have for Donovan is, is this, uh, my friend. Number one, what does the 4th of July mean to you with your military background, and how does that compare to your freedom in Christ? It doesn't compare to my uh, freedom in Christ whatsoever, because anything man-made, to me, it's all this is irrelevant. All this government stuff and ideology is irrelevant here on the earth, because when it's all said and done, there's only uh, one kingdom, and the kingdom of Christ is what I look for. Um, but... How do you view the 4th of July? Now, you're a military man, 24 years. How do you celebrate the 4th of July in your own, not, yeah. not physically, yeah. but in your own mind and heart? Yeah, in my own mind and heart, I, you know, I, I just reflect on a lot of stuff that this country has gone through, the unity. To me, in general, the 4th of July is for us to come together as a nation. Amen. You know, regardless of our political, political affiliate, parties, you know, whatever those, because this is the day that we said... We are going to stand to ourselves away from England, mm -hmm. and we should come together. And you know, I mean, with all the bipartisan stuff that's going on in the world, you know, in, in the country now, and all the different factions and stuff, this is the one day that we should reflect and see how far we've come in mm -hmm. the two hundred and something years. Is it three hundred years now? Yeah, 200, over two hundred fifty yeah, years, something yeah. like that, to, to where we're at now, and reflect on where we're going. Exactly. Very, so very that's, true. That's what's for, that's what's My second question I have for Donovan in regard to this topic is. Think about the idea of bondage. Bondage not only from the standpoint of being uh, under the rule of the British, mm -hmm. you know, back in those days, and then your bondage in Christ in regards to the, the, how we were prior uh, mm -hmm. to the freedoms that we have today. Talk a little bit about bondage from a military aspect and then freedom from bondage from a Christian aspect. Well, everybody knows when you're born in this world, no man wants to be a slave. Oh boy, absolutely. No man wants to be a slave. So to have to live under another person's rule, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I'm a history major. Mm -hmm. uh, you are. A, a lot of people don't don't realize that basically we wanted our self representation, mm -hmm. our self governance. If, if it was if it wasn't for the fact that King George was was a total idiot, mm -hmm. we would probably still be part of the, the British Commonwealth and Common Empire. That's very but, true. But because of greed. They didn't want to share the revenue, and that's why they kept taxing us. And we're like, what's going on over here, whatever the deal is. So, basically, um, you know, bondage, especially as a military man, is an unacceptable form of uh, governance or a system. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to be under a rule of somebody else. Amen. When there's so much that this world has to offer, and that you could be in going. Go now, how do you apply that to your faith? Do you, do you feel your freedom from sin, the bondage you may have felt of because of your sin, because of your faith in Christ? Is it some similarities in regards to that, to the bondage that we may have felt back there, back in the time of Washington, to the uh, to the uh, English army? For, for me, I, I would say, you know, not really, but but I, but I can see the similarities and in, in, in to, report to where like Satan is constantly oppressing me mm -hmm. to sin and to rebel. And to do you know do things that that are against God, and you know there, there's a similarity in fighting the British and and doing the same thing, but you have to stay faithful. Yeah. You just have to stay faithful. Do you feel that freedom in Christ? Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I mean, when when I think of what is waiting for me, I am just so elatious versus what's happening down here. Oh yeah, that's why you always say, yeah, one more day, one more day. Exactly. I got to I got to tough it out. Talk about your military career. Did, I don't. I don't know the time frame, but were you in, in any type of combat? Yeah, absolutely. Where? Uh, Desert Storm. Okay. Somalia. Okay. Rwanda. So did Afghanistan, you? Afghanistan. In your Iraq. Uh, you want me to keep on? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, I actually do because that, yeah. that that tells us a yeah. little bit more about you. Yeah. Yeah, because you got to remember, um, I I was tactical. 
So tactical cargo, C-130s, Air Force, Air, Air Force tactical. Mm-hmm. And so um, I wasn't a ground pounder. People, I mean, much respect to those guys. Those guys, but, oh yeah, absolutely. But, but when you're flying at 232 uh, miles an hour at 300 feet, and people are taking pock shots at you, and you're in austere location. So as a tactical C-130 guy, and those of that know what C-130s are, those planes go back to the 1950s. Turbo prop, whatever, the seeds of caisson. Mm-hmm. We're coming in when those Army and Marines need supplies. We're the ones that are going to come in and bring it to them mm-hmm. under fire. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's a serious type. So, thing. did you in your in your experiences, did you see bondage through those battles? I mean, did you see people that were basically captured? Oh, Which, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Rwanda was a, a genocide that was un- unbelievable to to witness dead bodies everywhere and just. So, did you know people, friends, or co- co-patriots with you, or you know, you know, you know, some of your comrades? Did any of the people that you you served with? Were they ever basically uh, in any that type of bondage or caught or you know taken no. as prisoner or anything uh, like that? Thank goodness, I never had any of my uh, comrades that oh, had to, awesome. that had to, had to go through that because you know we're in a technological military mm-hmm. aspect, so there's not a lot of prisoners of war. Other than Desert Storm, that was the, probably the most recent mm-hmm. exchange of prisoners of war. And there was only a couple, what, 150 uh, prisoners of war. But thank goodness, I gotcha. I didn't have to worry about. It. That's that's doing that. okay. I mentioned four verses to you. I'm going to read them to you again. I want to ask you which one of these four verses appeals to you the most. I mean, it really affects your heart. A verse that it kind of signifies what July Fourth is all about. I said, First Peter two sixteen: Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover for evil. Live as a servant of God. Then I said, Second Corinthians three seventeen: Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Mm-hmm. Third verse was Galatians 5 1. It is freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mm-hmm. And the last one I said was John 8 32. And you will know the truth, and the truth awesome. will set you free. Of those four verses, which one in your life and in your heart signifies what July 4th is all about to you as a Christian man? Verse 1. Verse the very first one. First Peter 2 16. Let me read that to you again, folks. Donovan chose live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as servants of God. Why did you choose that one as a personal verse to you for July the July fourth? We're in a we're in a democracy, and you know you can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And that verse to me pretty much expounds the the stumbles that we go through because of the freedoms we have. Mm-hmm. You know, we think homosexuality is something godly. It's not. Well, I mean, it's, it's, not bil- yeah, it's not biblical. It's I mean, a, you know, mm-hmm. and so uh, that one, you know, pretty much tells me as a Christian, mm-hmm. this is how you should live regardless of how much freedom you have. You can't use your freedom as an excuse. That's a great point. To just sin. Yeah. Go against God. Exactly. You know, oh, okay. I, I'm in the capitalist society. It's okay to rob. It's okay to steal. It's well, okay. Everybody to, else is doing it. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's. Even pastors. Right. You know, so, 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 so for me, that's the most prolific verse. That's awesome. To. That's awesome. For me, it's I love that verse mm. because it's so true. Mm. It, you don't take advantage of the great, amazing right. grace of God. But I, it, my, my, one of my favorite verses that I've had, even with you know, with July Fourth or not, is the Galatians five mm. one verse, which says, "It is freedom that Christ has set us free." Yes. We need to understand exactly what Christ did for yes, us. Right. We have no idea how hopeless this life would be if I didn't have Christ. Right. I mean, I look around and I see the. Anger, hate, division, everywhere. There's no hope in anything we see out there. But there's hope. According to this verse, there's hope because Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. And, and, and we always forget that too because as a military person, all, all Christ is doing is using me as a tool. Very true. You know, Very to, true. You know, to you know, keep us free and do these things because without God... Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what the military does with mm-hmm. you, with you and your service. Mm-hmm. He uses you and your abilities as the right. tool to keep the free, to keep us free, keep us free. in regards mm-hmm. to the oppression of this. So, so there is a lot of similarities between what July Fourth represents, which I think is a amazing day of, of celebration. Mm-hmm. But it can it cannot just be in regards to what God has done to, to, for this country, which is everything. But what has God for, done for you and me personally? The bondage that we would have been under. 
in sin and the hopelessness without Christ. Right. The same way that if what, what George Washington, if he didn't do what he did and we would have basically lost, we may not be sitting today mm -hmm. in the same way that we are now. That type of celebration is what we, we elevate that celebration, but we must never forget what Jesus did for us in regards to our freedom in Christ. That's what it's all about. So I'm going to ask you, all the audience is to do, is that please, on July 4th, I want you to celebrate. celebrate. I want you to have fun. Go to your Come family, together. friends, mm -hmm. parties, swimming together, pools, yeah. barbecues. I don't care what you do, but do it safely and do it fun. Don't do fireworks unless yeah. it's legal. Right. Unless it's legal because it's very, very dangerous. But one thing I do ask you to do is I want you to not forget what Christ did for us. Absolutely. The freedom that we have in Christ, the bondage is gone from sin and death because Jesus so right. took those so chains right. Off of us That right. freedom Must be celebrated Every day But specifically On a day that we're Celebrating the country's Freedom on so July right. 4th Declaration of Independence So right So right You know We, we, we always forget Christ Yeah we United States doomed. is great and everything like that. It's almost like We're um, You know I have some friends That think Nation before God. I tell them no. Oh, I know. I know a lot of yeah. people like that too. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. they, you know, they just wired it kind of a little wrong. And I say no, it's God before nation. Yeah. So we got to remember th this nation wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Christ. Oh, I couldn't have said it better. This nation <laughs> would not exist if it wasn't for God. What Christ did, it is all about God. This nation is under right. God. Under God. I don't exactly. care what anybody wants to do about our pledge. This station is all about the Lord. So please, your July 4th, enjoy yourself. Have a great day. But please, take a moment out and pray to thank yes. God for your freedom yes. in Christ. Yeah. Uh, a, a real quick disclaimer. Please do not forget, 4th of July is not to honor the troops. It's not to honor our war dead. We have Veterans Day for that. And we, and have, we Memorial have Memorial Day. Day. Right. It's for our country. It's for our country. It's for us to come together as, as Americans and see where we've been. And understand where we're going. That's a great point because you know we do. We need to honor our vets and and, and, and memorialize those that lost their lives. Mm -hmm. You know we do have days for that, but we always have to remember sure. because that's just not a one day mm -hmm. thing. But I don't care if you're a Republican. Democrat, I don't care if you're a Democrat, Independent, Socialist. socialist. The bottom line is we all live in the same country, country, and we need yeah. to love our country because you have you have options. If you don't love this country. You can't go somewhere else. I mean, no one's hold. There's no bondage. Right. <laughs> if you hate this country so much for whatever reason, I that's up, that's in your that's up to you. But then you could always leave. And then you don't have to stay. But if you are here, we need to love this country. Sure. I don't care if you love Donald Trump, don't hate Donald Trump. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican, Democrat. What does matter is we live in a country that's free, that gives us the freedoms that we have, and we need to. We need to respect that and we need to honor that right. because of the people that right. gave us that freedom. And also remember, uh, for those of us that have come here from other countries, on July 4th, please, please, I know you want to represent your thing, but you live in this country now. Exactly. Fly your flag on another day. We I see, I agree with that too because you know, no one's trying to take away your heritage. No one's right. trying to take away your culture or your experience. That's what makes this country great because right. we're a melting pot of many, exactly. many cultures. Fly, fly the flag but this is the still country. the United States. Right. you got to remember, we, we, we respect every Everybody. nation that's part of our melting pot. But this is America. Right. And we need to celebrate America. Not only on July 4th, every day because this is the country of the free, the land of the free, home of the brave. This is who we are. This is where you and live. And, and, and I'll admit straight out, you know, we're, we're, we're next, near to Mexico when Cinco de Mayo happens. I party with, with uh, my Hispanic friends. Absolutely. It's celebrating about their heritage. We yeah. have no problem in celebrating in, what, what, St. Patrick's Day? St. Patrick's <laughs> yeah. Day, all these different... We have no problem things. celebrating somebody else's heritage because that's what they do. But when it's July 4th, that's yes. us. United celebrate, States. Exactly. Let's celebrate the United States. Absolutely. Any closing comments before we have to close out? Uh, Any other thoughts? All i got to do is say, if, if you live in the desert... And you have, you know, we live in the desert. It's very dry out here. Please do not shoot firecrackers if it's illegal. Please don't do it. It's very dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. And a lot of people like to, you know, kind of get intoxicated and then do things like that. You got to be real careful because I'll tell you, not that hard to lose a finger or more. Or burn somebody's house down because you, Absolutely. you shot a firecracker. That Absolutely. Fire. So please be careful, be safe, be smart. Yes. Thank you again for being a part of the um, Pastor Don Weekly Show. Don't forget, continue to uh, enjoy and, and share 
the Reflections Ministry page. It's such a, it's just a, a wonderful way to witness. It's a wonderful way to share, you know, the gospel, share, you know, the Bible, biblical truth. So please continue to do that. Um, Don Meinberg author page is getting more traction again, so please check it out. It's my book, Reaching New Heights. It's a book for middle school, high school kids in bringing them to Christ during the most difficult time of their lives, the time of puberty. So please check it out if you've never seen it. Don Meinberg author. Check out the books. Like it, follow it, and please share that page as well. I'm done. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful 4th of July. Be safe. Happy 4th of July. We'll see you guys next week. Pastor Don's weekly podcast.